Okay, uh, here we go, part two. Um, I took a few things off uh, since the last part, but it was just unbolting things, nothing really exciting. So, yeah, we're down to uh, just the frame. Okay, here's the frame. I didn't record hardly anything, I don't think. Um, I don't know where I left off, but anyway, as you can see, no more paint. Sandblasted the whole frame, mostly. It's got a little bit of sand in it do in the front, but we're almost ready to prime it. We're going to use some 2K urethane primer. It'll smooth everything out real nice, I guess. I just got to sand a couple little things and degrease it. We're good to go. Look at that weld. Look at that. That happened after I sanded into it. Now, I don't know if those are factory being that bad or what, but that's terrible. And here we go, getting ready to prime it. We're using Wanda 8100, which is the 2K filler primer. That'll work. And the real frame's primed. I think I got it everywhere. It was really difficult to get get in on her brackets and stuff, but it looks like it's pretty good, I guess. Yeah, so the final color is going to be really close to this, so even if it does get chipped, you're not going to really notice it, but it, the paint we're putting on is pretty tough, so it should be, should be all right. All right, we're finally done with painting the frame. It probably looks like primer. On um, the photo, it's hard to show, but yeah, see? She's gloss. This is kind of the Nardo gray that I was going to do. This is just, this is nicer paint and a nicer setup than what I was going to use before. So, yeah, once it's all fully cured, it'll be really durable stuff. As good as I can do, except for powder coat, and I ain't spending $400 to get that done. So I'm just going to, uh, Basically wash all the all the swing arm the swing arm and a arms shocks wash it all up um, And then the chassis stuff can go back in um, I'm not gonna be able to put the motor in yet obviously, but Get most of the, the major chassis stuff together on it all the stuff. I can do um, Without the motor which I guess isn't really all that much stuff, but Yeah, I'll do that and I'll probably uh We'll take the bead locks apart I don't know if they're facing the wrong way, but the other side, we'll take all the allens out, get the bead locks apart, and uh, polish the wheels up. Because last winter, riding it on the on the road, I, everything just got all salted up and just kind of corroded everything. Like, you can see the uh, shocks are all corroded there. I'll probably spray some something on that, take those apart, and do that. All right, here we go. Banshee engine assembly. I think this is the third video. Here we go. We're ready to go. We got our parts back. So we got our pistons. We got a stroker crank back there in the bag. Cylinders. Our, can you see their board? We're good. We got our porting done. And all that. So that's all good to go. Ready to run. Got our gaskets and junk and all that. So and seals, whatnot. So we just gotta, I got the cases cleaned out. Uh, that's just casting stuff. It's not junk in there. So, anyway, we're, the cases are clean. I'm gonna paint them after I bolt it together. It's just easier. 
and then uh, tranny stuff. I just gotta clean clean this stuff out and um, get our clips back in. Uh, I'll toss all the gears in it <clears throat> and um, yeah, good to go. I think I'll try to time lapse this maybe. I don't know. All right, time for the top end here. So we got our piston rings. Uh, gonna gap them. Uh, the pistons aren't labeled all that clearly which one goes to what, but I'm pretty sure I got them all straight. So yeah, basically the ring gap is the when it's in the bore, it's the distance between the ends there. So for this, we're gonna set it to about thirteen thousandths. Uh, normally, I think they go to all this, but ah, I like a little extra. 13 is still not huge, but anyway, yeah, so you're just going to put it down in the bore a little bit, just so it's not right at the edge. Sometimes they come from the factory good enough, and this one is pretty small, it's probably not going to, let's see if you can see it, um, let's see, I don't know if that's clear enough to see the edge there, but anyway, the feeler gauge doesn't fit, so we got to file them a little bit. That's really, really tight, so. Alright, I don't remember where the uh, time lapse or whatever left off, but uh, my battery died, so more low quality video. But clutch stuff's almost together, I guess. Uh, I just gotta tighten the nut down for the boss there, and uh, yeah, get the pressure plate on there, and uh, you know, all, all this junk, and uh, stick the lock up on there be good to go. Other than that, that's mostly good. I uh, got the uh, intake cleaned up. And yes, single carb. Uh, I don't want to buy another carb right now because I'd have to buy two, really. So 
we're going to run the single carb. I don't know how big of a jet I'm going to need to run. I was running like a one, oh, I don't remember what it was, 180 something before, so it'll be up there, but it is what it is. It'll work. There she goes. 